Did you know that we have been discussing good agricultural practices for 10 years? Let's look at the value of this certificate. An important part of preparing for the opportunities available to us is to implement and get certified on good agricultural practices. This means meeting the international quality standards that the global marketplace requires. Let's not forget that we live in a globalized world and we have to meet the requirements that the marketplace demands. And it is demanding that we guarantee that our products are safe, that they won't harm any consumer. They are also demanding that we be very careful and respectful of the environment. And they are asking that we apply principles of social justice. Those three key elements are the pillars of good practices. A producer that employs good livestock practices and who has established good farming practices has the possibility of generating economies of scale on his farm, of becoming more efficient, of producing healthier food that can be sold at better prices, of producing products that can fetch higher prices that have the possibility of reaching specialized national or international markets. That producer will be more efficient, will be more competitive, and will be more environmentally friendly. Adherence to good livestock practices on a farm comprises certain technical requirements linked to animal health in the facilities, animal feeding procedures, and the rational use of veterinary medications. There are official norms. In the case of meat production is the ICA resolution number 2341 from 2007. In the case of dairy production, it's resolution 3285 from 2008. According to resolution 2640, it's 24 rules, but I can cite you some of the most important ones. One is the issue of feed. In Colombia, the use of slop for feeding pigs is forbidden. Slop consists of human food waste used to feed pigs. So that is one of the points that rules touch upon and that they require. Let's say that there are various alternatives to fulfill the regulations. One being the use of commercial feed, that is concentrate, as it is known in some parts of the country. Another product that can be used for feed is crop byproducts, as well as some industrial byproducts. It is completely forbidden to feed them the entrails of another species. This is a fundamental point. Another point that is extremely important and which must be taken into account when undertaking new production projects. So before you begin a new farm, you have to think about where you're going to situate it. What does this mean? It means that pig farms must be located in places where local zoning regulations permit them to operate. That is, the local zoning law must have zoning regulations that specifically permit the location of pig farms. This is fundamental. And let's say that in some ways, this will make sure that the producer doesn't run into problems with urban developments down the road. Another important issue is to have professional technical assistance, the professional in question being a veterinary doctor. It doesn't mean that each farm should hire a full-time veterinary doctor. It just means that there are some procedures on the farm for which you need the backing of a veterinary physician. Those are medication, prescriptions, everything that has to do with the handling of medication must be handled by a vet and there has to be evidence of this on the farm. That is another fundamental point. In order for a vegetable or produce farm in general to be certified, what needs to happen is for you to do things right and prove that you did them right. To start off, you need adequate installations. We are talking about installations for workers. Your installations must have a bathroom so that any worker on the farm can use it. The bathroom must have water, toilet paper, towels, soap, and it must be accessible to all the workers on the farm. 
Debe tener, eh, un sitio donde se puedan almacenar los plaguicidas. It must have a place where insecticides can be stored, isolated and protected so that they are beyond the reach of children. Debe tener un sitio eh, aislado para fertilizar. You must have an isolated place to store fertilizer, a place where you can properly store work tools and insecticide spraying equipment. You must have a clearly delineated place where chemicals are mixed and a place where you can eliminate the residue left over from the application of insecticides or where you wash pumps and the insecticide application equipment. For comprehensive management of pests, you must use all the tools available for pest management and not limit yourself to just using chemical products. Use of chemical products is allowed, but they must be used in a rational way, using only the products recommended for that crop. You use only the products recommended for the pest you're going to control, using the dosage specified on the label, respecting non-spray periods, and rotating among the correct products. There is a minimum level of worker benefits that are required. They must at least pay into some form of social security. Workers must receive training on a permanent basis on the jobs they perform. During the harvest, workers with any type of contagious disease, like the flu, should refrain from working at all. Any worker with a disease of this type should not be in contact with products that are going to be harvested. Some words of advice for produce and fruit producers looking to implement good agricultural practices. First of all, you must be aware that if you're going to develop the implementation process in order to achieve this certification in the future, it's fundamental to keep records at the farm and to make use of good crop management practices in general such as, for example, only using the agrochemicals allowed for this crop. Because a lot of the mistakes made in this country happen because of the application of agrochemicals without any type of control. That is, people are using products that were designed and produced to attack plagues or diseases in other crops, but they apply them to fruits and produce. But we need to realize that this is a product for human consumption, and it must be as safe as possible. As I said about the records, the thing is to start with recording basic information on the farm, such as soil analysis, so that we know where we're standing and what we need to do to grow our crop. We must keep track of day wages paid and record how we are fulfilling all the requirements for the certification process. We must understand that there are different types of certification. Depending on the certification that the producer wants to obtain, they must adhere to the protocols and rules that each certification requires to be fulfilled and which they will be audited on in order to be certified. With regards to good agricultural practices in the area of responsible management of pesticides, it's important to remember to use products that are legally registered in our country for the control of pests and other things. In this regards as well, it's important to understand labels to store pesticides improperly. In this regards as well, it's important to understand labels to store pesticides properly, to keep them in good conditions with their original labels in the proper place and to avoid dangerous situations with these substances. Same thing with fertilizers. After these products have been used, we need to do a proper disposal of the containers left over after biocontrol activities. I am referring to the management of post-consumer containers I am referring to the management of post-consumer containers, which nowadays we handle through the Clean Countryside Foundation, which operates in our country a post-consumer container disposal program called Clean Countryside. What do we recommend to farmers? It's important to keep in mind that part of good agricultural practices means keeping up with commitments regarding the proper disposal of containers. Once you've used the product, 
you have to wash the containers three times. What do you get out of washing them three times? You can reduce the amount of insecticide in the container. The insecticides remains in that water and you can reuse that water and apply it to your crop in order to optimize use of the pesticide. Nothing is wasted. We have to reuse everything. After triple washing the containers, it's important to destroy them because that way we avoid them falling into the wrong hands and have them end up being used for non-environmentally friendly ends, which are not safe at all for the community. I am referring, for example, to fake products or the manufacturer of hoses, the manufacturer of home utensils, and in some cases, the manufacturer of toys for our children, our sons and daughters. So we must properly dispose of these containers, preventing them from falling into this cycle of misuse.